The first thing is that he had very few disciples. He was a very uh, tough person to interact with because of his uh, powerful presence. And he didn't want people to just come and get a little tip and go away. So he put you through a little bit of a uh, test in a, some way to see if you're really interested in, in learning. And once he accepted you, he would give all his time. So once I had gone through this kind of uh, uh, initiatory ritual of being accepted, which was not formal in, in the sense, it was over a period of time, uh, I could be very open and discuss any subject. But my interests at that point, uh, I was very much interested in his Hatha Yoga, because he had learnt with the Mysore school, which was the period when uh, uh, the school from where yoga was revived in India. And what we know of yoga today comes from that. So he was a unique master of that. And he was also a master of the uh, martial arts. And he was interested in physical culture, the body. Because he said that, you know, there's too much of this renunciation of the body, but we are incarnated beings and we can't neglect the body. So he said Hatha Yoga is important. So I started learning that. Then uh, he said that I have to learn um, Samkhya Yoga which is the backbone, according to him, of Indian uh, philosophical thinking because it permeates in all the other schools. So we learnt uh, a text called um, Sankhya Karika where I would read and then come back and ask questions about some aspects or the commentator's interpretation and others would be looked, uh, glossed over and we wouldn't talk about it. Then we looked at the Hatha Yoga, uh, Yoga Pradipika, which is a text basically on Hatha Yoga. He was interested in two other texts, Shiva Samhita and Geranda Samhita, all dealing with Hatha Yoga. So he would say, read that, or if I was doing asana, he would say, what does it say? He would ask you, and you had to learn. He wouldn't give you the key and say, you know, just read, I'll explain to you. So you did some homework, and if you came and had some intelligent question or pertinent question, he would otherwise he'd say, Pora. <laughs> he would say, just go away, you know, don't ask such questions. So it, it, you had to be really well prepared before arriving. And there was no uh, curriculum. It's according to what was happening on that day, you would turn up. Sometimes there was no discussion. He would, he would talk about many things like his cows or the elephants or music or talk about just local uh, events or somebody would come in and the whole subject would change. So there was no structured learning. And over a period of time, uh, you realize that you had accumulated a certain culture about various things. And then it's up, it was up to you to make him get to focus because he would bring up any subject. But his special area was Mimamsa and Uttara Mimamsa, which is the part of philosophy which is least studied and least popular because it's about Vedic ritual but it's also about the power and meaning of what makes ritual effi efficient or efficacious and it also talks about the way language even the ordinary speech has power so he had his pet subject so we would talk about it uh, there was a text called, there is a text called Vakya Padiya of Bhartri Hari. So he would talk randomly about different areas and then sometimes he would ask me what my op opinion is and that we would have arguments over it. And uh, maybe suddenly an elephant would walk into the courtyard and he would say, okay, the man would come in and say, okay, I'm coming and we'd continue and then he'll go and treat and then he'll come back and say, okay, where were we? Okay, then we'll go back. So, you know, it never was the same and uh, I, it was unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a great sense of humor and he would always repeat this famous uh, Sanskrit sloka that uh, Kavya Shastra Vinodena, that with uh, Kavya, that is poetry and talking about Shastra and uh, frolicking and fun, the, in, the wise men spend their time and the fools, the Murkha spends his time fighting and arguing and uh, f uh, being sad. So he would say, you know, which do you prefer? 
So, you know, he would always say that. And then, at some point, since I was interested in Ayurveda, he was specially interested in certain chapters in the Charaka Samhita where the mode of thinking and the philosophical aspect of Ayurveda was discussed. And it's also to do with logic. So we looked at that and once again it was an informal sub thing and then we, could dig we would digress to some other subject which was related and come back to it. So it was a very open space where it was up to you once he accepted you to put the frames and if he thought the frame was interesting enough he would talk about it or otherwise he would you know ignore it